Hi, I'm Adrian, I'm from France. My name is Carly and I'm from California. This is our bus, Genget. And we are coming to you live from British Columbia and we are so excited to show you our bus. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Bioptimizers. Go to magnesiumbreakthrough.com forward slash florp to get a 10% discount using code florp10 at checkout. And remember to subscribe. I think it all started when we were traveling in France. I, with my dad, built a van that we enjoyed together in the south of France and all the way to Switzerland. And we thought, how could we do the same thing in the States? But Adrien had an idea to do it maybe a little bit bigger. Thinking conceptually, something that we knew was going to be important was going to be able to host a lot of people mm. for dinners. We, it required having a living room. Yeah. <laughs> we, could, we could have gone, gotten with a smaller bus maybe, but having a front space like we have now and being able to receive up to six people, that was definitely something we wanted to have. We decided to call our bus Genget. It is a type of gathering which happens in France, which is always in a setting close to nature, by a river with a lot of colorful string lights, or not colorful. <laughs> <laughs> we bought the bus in Sacramento, and Adrien could only be in Sacramento for three months at a time because tourist visa. So there was a really big constraint. In three months, we had time to demolish the inside, remove the seats, remove the floor, the original ceiling. Uh, we insulated, we installed the wood burning stove, our bed at the back. And then I moved uh, to Canada and kept working on the way, uh, wherever I could stop. Uh, and it was raining a lot. Uh, every time I had a piece of wood to cut, you know, I had to go in, into the rain. That, that was uh, a difficulty for sure. For one person, it would be a full year, full time. I think, yeah, something like that. It was a lot of work. We thought that $20,000 would be a good budget. And uh, we're pretty close to that, actually. Yeah. And uh, also pretty close to having a finished bus. There's a few little things, of course. There's uh, always something that you want to add, but it's pretty close. Yeah. So this is Ginget. She is a 97 Bluebird, has a Allison transmission and a Cummins engine. It's 33 feet, 10 meters. And the other thing that was really important was looking for rust, which is pretty easy in California. The style of the paint job, we were inspired by another schoolie that we saw, and we really liked what they had done with the stripes and with the green and the white. So we decided to emulate what they had done. Very important to use the Tropicool roof paint. Uh, that does provide a lot of cooling. But fortunately, we had a really helpful neighbor, Julian, who was able to lend us a sprayer and really give us a lot of the tips on how to use it. Days and days and days of sanding, scraping, and then the actual painting took like two days all together with drying. So these storage bins, we knew that we wanted these on our bus, so it was really great when we saw them. You'll have to excuse us, this is basically our garage. We didn't prep this for you guys. It's really wonderful because everything that is kind of dirty doesn't have to come inside the bus. It stays right here. Here we have, this is where the clean water goes into our tank. And this is just to drain clean water. Here we have the engine compartment. We do have a rear engine. Rear engine is quieter when you're driving. Uh, that was important to us. Um, and then layout wise, it just worked out really well. Uh, less to see on this side, but if we want to be plugged into shore power, we can here. Um, ideally, the plan is to be completely off-grid. That's why we have these two awesome solar panels, uh, 600 watts. But sometimes, if it's a very cold winter in Canada, it's very useful to be able to plug into shore power and to be able to run the bus. A feature that is really exciting to us is our back door. In different layout iterations, we thought about maybe covering this, maybe not using it anymore. But it's really nice to have two entrances to the bus. And oftentimes, if we have something really heavy or during the build, if we wanted to be able to just put, put it in the bus, it was really convenient to get it right here and into the back half of the bus. Here we have a panel to access the air brakes. And here's the original bus electrical. Adrien has made some changes, removed some of the stuff that we didn't need anymore, like that sweet stop sign. But other than that, this is just the bus electrical. Hi, come on in. So this is the front of Genget. 
we have the cockpit here. A lot of people uh, ask how easy it is to drive a bus and I just have to say it's actually quite easy. As long as you're aware of how big you are. Everything still works, so I just reused some of the switches for convenience. Uh, I did, for example, a rear camera here, which is very convenient. I could stop right by the table here, as you can see earlier. <laughs> We wanted to have some space here because all of this area was used for nothing, pretty much, or only that fan. So we decided to add a counter here and uh, it's strong enough for a lot of people to sit on as well when we have lots of guests. <laughs> we have a TV on a swivel here as well. It's actually a, a computer monitor and we plug it to our laptop and we can watch movies, series, also work. I uh, have a second screen for work. We have two couches. One becomes a bed when we want to host people. And uh, we use the cushion of the other side to make a two-person bed. We have a swivel table here, which is pretty nice for the two of us, and sometimes more. It's on a lagoon swivel mount, which is uh, quite convenient. This bench is a wheel well as well, so unfortunately we cannot use uh, the space for storage, but we managed to salvage some space here and have a shoe rack. We have a cubic mini Grizzly here, which has been working very well for us. Some wood storage on the side, some catering's underneath. Welcome to the kitchen. <laughs> we built it mostly with pallets of wood that we uh, managed to find. Like all of this is made with pallets, made with pallets, and this is new, but uh, from Home Depot, both of those. Um, we have a large sink, it's a laundry sink. We wanted something very big and deep, so that's why we got this. And that was just a leftover of one of the counter here. I managed to cut a little bit the sides here, and it fits perfectly here. So when we drive, it doesn't fly around. Your espresso machine, we do not have a massive power bank. So whenever we use the coffee machine, uh, we'd rather have uh, some sun at the same time. Uh, otherwise the voltage of the batteries, because they are lead acid, is dropping too low. So uh, we only have uh, sunny coffee mornings. <laughs> we really liked the idea of, of the jars hanging like this. It's been nice, it looks good, and it doesn't fall. <laughs> so that is a good point. We have a shelf up here, which uh, supports our glasses. Some spices on this side. A little fan here for when we cook on the side. This is a 1950s stove that Curly found on Marketplace. We had to change the gas nozzles to make it run with propane and uh, some air intake uh, adjustments as well. A very nice little bar that we use a lot. I even have a chair that I use sometimes here and it's sometimes my office when I work at home and I have the screen right there. We have a compressor fridge right underneath here. This is a way to lock it so it doesn't go too far when driving. And uh, we put it on a drawer like that, so it's easy to access. On the main water heater with the outside exhaust here. I used to have a ventless water heater. Turns out they didn't warm up the water enough, especially in cold winter here in Canada. So we got rid of it and we got one with a vent and we can actually uh, we have more adjustment for water temperature. Now it's, we can have very hot showers. This is our electrical panel. We have well, the selection of the color for the living room here and the intensity. We have LEDs running uh, all on the other side of the living room. This is our battery monitor, which tells us the state of the batteries and whether it's charging or discharging. And this is our solar control panel and some switches for different systems like water pump, uh, lights. Uh, this is to read our water uh, tank levels. This is the fresh water tank and the gray water tank. This is where our two batteries are. There are golf cart batteries, six volt connected in series for a 12 volt bank of 220 amp hours. 
This is not huge, but so far it's been enough because we are plugged in in winter. So the lack of solar is made up. <laughs> and this is our inverter charger. This is a 2200 watts, pure sign. It also charges, so whenever we are plugged into the outside, we have the option of charging the batteries if we want. This is our bathroom. We have the shower here with a concrete wall. We decided to completely build it. Uh, the reason is we have a tight and awkward space here and we're looking at uh, pre-made uh, shower pants, trying to find a way to fit that somewhere and turns out, turns out it was too complicated. So we decided to just go from scratch, uh, plywood, concrete boards, and uh, exactly the size we wanted. We built that shower pan at the very bottom with some uh, one by twos stained and then protected. And we even have a little bench here. I don't know why, but there is a bench in the shower. This is a uh, sink that we made out of a copper salad bowl that we found on Marketplace. Five dollars maybe. Composting toilets, nothing fancy, Home Depot bucket, you know. Welcome to the bedroom hallway. So we have uh, a 1941 world map and I just want to say thank you Bernard, uh, it works very well here. <laughs> uh, closet here, this is our queen size bed, uh, so it feels like like a house, it's very very white comfortable and uh, we have some closet space on both sides, uh, storage up there, this is a painting made by my friend Pierre in France, so thank you Pierre as well. <laughs> also some storage underneath the bed. And this is also where we have our water tank, which is behind here. It's a uh, 200 liter water tank, which usually lasts us for five days if we take showers, the two of us. The engine uh, in some other cases would take space that cannot be used otherwise. And in this case, it just raises our bed a bit, but it still allows us to use the full length. I made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> I redid really a lot of things. Uh, but it was nice that because I was living in the bus, every time I would add something, it would improve my uh, daily life. Go to sleep and think, oh, next day I can, I can use a counter to cook. <laughs> <laughs> or I have a sink now and it actually drains somewhere. I don't have to empty a bucket. <laughs> Things like that. Uh, gradually, it really improves. That was nice. I remember that the first month of traveling, yeah. I wasn't sure what people would think. I would stop at the parking lot and so many people looked at the bus and looked at the person that was coming out of it. And I didn't know if it was like, that is weird, what is that thing, or where are they curious? And it turned out that 90% of the time, people are smiling and saying, hi, oh, cool, cool bus, can I take a peek? So that was very pleasant. Uh, and I love giving tours and I love answering questions. Uh, so, yeah. all good. He <laughs> likes the attention. <laughs> I think that this project has taught me um, I tend to be a planner. I like things very, very, very planned. And Adrienne is kind of the opposite. So we make a good team. Adrienne likes to do things. So oftentimes we would approach a different project and I would say, okay, but what are all the different ways we could do it? What if we did it this way? What if we did it this way? And honestly, if I were building this bus by myself, it would take me maybe 10 years because of all of the iterations. So I think that we have taught each other that a little bit of both is important. Maybe taking a step back, considering a few different options, and then doing it. Um, and then if you do it wrong or if you don't like it, it's yours. You can just change it. So it's not the end of the world. It doesn't have to be perfect. What is the number one mineral that beats stress, fatigue, and helps you get better sleep? It's magnesium, but not just any magnesium. This is Magnesium Breakthrough from Bioptimizers, and it combines the seven essential forms of magnesium to help you sleep better, stress less, and just generally experience more peace throughout your day. Now, most magnesium supplements fail because they use synthetics or preservatives, but when you get all seven critical forms of magnesium, you get a serious upgrade 
from your brain to your body, your sleep gets better, muscle tension goes down, and so does pain and inflammation. With this one simple action, you can reverse magnesium deficiency in all of its forms and start feeling the benefits quickly. So click the link in the description below and go to magnesiumbreakthrough.com forward slash Florb to get a 10% discount using code Florb10 at checkout on Magnesium Breakthrough. I recommend you check it out. When I take it, I notice a difference in my sleep. I'm almost done with this bottle here. Uh, so click the link in the description or the pinned comment and go to magnesiumbreakthrough.com forward slash Florb and use code Florb10 for a 10% discount. Thank you for watching. Have a great week.